Morning everyone, welcome back to the shed. Hope you're all well today. Uh, nice sunny morning here in Shropshire. So uh, thought I'd give you another quick update. Um, once once I've done the 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 roundup of, of builds that I'd completed over the last couple of months, I thought it might be an idea just to give you some indication of what I'm planning for the next few months and into this year away from what I would normally do for work. What I do for work is kind of self-generating. The models come in and we take a look at them and then the builds are determined really by what we have on the desk and what I think is going to be interesting to the readers or, or, or whatnot. So on top of those builds, there are projects that I like to, to do of my own and things that I, I try and keep in mind when I'm planning around around my normal day-to-day -day schedule one of which is this thing now all of you know that I'm just a massive fan of the Harrier and tend to build models of this aircraft as often as time permits and over the last few years I've built quite a few of these things both the Airfix and Hasegawa and also the, the huge conversion that I did last year one of the kits that I've been wanting to build for a while and I haven't got around to is this. This is Revell's 32nd scale kit. This kit was first released in 1973 and has been kind of available sporadically over the years. But has been off the market now for, well, well over a decade I would think. I've certainly not seen one above and beyond a release that came out maybe in late 80s early 90s I've not seen anything since then and you very rarely see them on on shelves of, of model shops or or even second-hand dealers so I'm very fortunate that two of my friends Mike Reeves and Tim Perry sent me two of their one each of their kits and I've been able to add that, those two kits to one I'd already got up in the loft so now I'm in the process of planning what I'm going to do with one of these things and at the moment, I'm sort of thinking of maybe building two rather than, than just a single example. What I'm kind of planning with this thing is to build one almost from the box and then build one and detail the whole thing, correct everything, put all of the missing features into place and build an in-service aircraft. What Ravel replicated with their kit was a development batch Harrier, so it, it, it's not exactly the same as a standard service aircraft would have been. The in, around the intakes, in front of the front nozzles, have got separate panels that weren't on the standard GL1, those were blended in. And on this aircraft, that's not the case, so there is a certain amount of remedial work that would need to be done around that area in order to make it into a hurry on top of the, 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 the details that you would need to, to add. So, because I'm in a kind of nostalgic mood at the moment, I'm thinking of building one almost from the box and doing that detail. Now the one for, almost from the box I'm thinking of, of doing as a mocked up Sea Harrier for want of a better description. When the aircraft was being developed Hawker Siddeley took one of these aircraft and they put a false radar nose on it, put a, um, a warning receiver on the tail, and then they hung Martel missiles off the inner pylons underneath the wings. There are a few photographs of this aircraft out there and it looks really cool. I think it might even have a nose probe on the front of it. It's quite a different looking aircraft. It was kind of mocking up the idea of a Sea Harrier before a Sea Harrier had been really thought of. So I'm thinking of doing that as a conversion but not touching anything else. Building the model from the box stock as if it was a conversion done by a modeler in 1973 when the kit was first released. Then I'm thinking of taking the basics and then stripping everything out, removing all of the detail, rescribing it, scratch build the cockpit, scratch build the ejector seat, that kind of thing, and build it so that I can get the model up to the standards you would expect from a kit in 2017. So two different approaches create two very different looking models, but hopefully 
they'll both be they'll certainly both be accurate replicas it's just that one will be less detailed than the other the the Martel carrying Harrier is exactly the way that Ravel replicate their Harrier. It has the original intake configuration, it has everything that's in the kit other than the nose, the warning receiver and the, the Martels. So I think that would be a pretty straightforward conversion. I don't see anything difficult in that. It's just a case of building the rest of the model and making it kind of neat and tidy. That might involve me removing raised panel lines on it and just have it smooth and then just capture the shape more than anything else. But I kind of like the, the idea of that and I think it would be an interesting project and an interesting thing to run side by side. So that's kind of this, this kit. Also, my sort of feelings on these kits are that there's no point in them being around if people aren't prepared to build them. Just because this is old, and it is old, I mean it's 40 odd years old now, doesn't mean that it's not worth putting together. I, I just, I don't understand at all the idea of collecting construction kits that by their very nature are worthless until they're put together. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. It would be like buying a vintage car and never driving it. What's the point? It's, it's, they're redundant as objects. I may as well, if I'm not going to build this kit and I'm, I have no intention of putting this thing together, I may as well either give it away or throw it in the bin. So that's why I'm planning to do this. The fact that it's a Harrier and it's in 30 second scale and is the only kit available of a first generation Harrier in that scale kind of makes the project even more worthwhile. But beyond that, the idea of just having three of these boxes and having them sat on a shelf in my loft it's just pointless. I don't understand that at all. So, not going to do that with this. So we'll hopefully see that appear over the next over the next sort of few months. The um, the second thing um, that I've that I've planned to do as well is this. This is um, a 1981, 82 issue Eshi 70 second scale F16 Fighting Falcon. I bought this last night for a fiver from a from a guy that turned up at the model club. Uh, he's a trader that take that goes around to model shows um, around the UK. Really good friend of mine, and he got this. I just couldn't resist it for a fiver. It's a really nice kit, even now. Panel lines are great, and although it's really simple in terms of of, of design and some of the finer features. The panel line detail on this kit and its general level of accuracy is every bit as good as what you would expect from a, from a kit produced in 2017. It will need some TLC, seats are not very good, weapons could do with being replaced, that kind of thing, but overall as a, as a project I think it will look really cool. The only thing that you can't do with this is there's no option to have canopy open or, um, as you would on a, um, a Tamir or Hasegawa kit, you have to have the canopy closed. But beyond that, I think that's kind of a nice little, nice little classic project. So I couldn't resist it. I, I, I just can't resist these things, especially for fibre. I mean, I, I spend that much on a pint of beer. So there's that. And then finally, before I go, I talked to you several days ago about the main P51D and my plans, my initial plans for that model, and how I'd decided that I would fill the wings, paint those and then have a natural metal fuselage but because of the way that I'd set the cockpit up and the decals I bought I couldn't do what I wanted with it. So last night again um, bought from the club I managed to get one of these. This is obviously Tamiya's 48 scale P51 Mustang, really simple kit, really nice even today. So I've decided that I'm going to build this and I'm going to build it for the next issue to run it alongside the main build that will be in the April edition of Model Airplane. And I'm going to build it so that I can replicate the painted wings and, and the metal fuselage. However, I'm not going to paint it as a, war, as a wartime aircraft. I'm going to paint it as a modern day warbird. And that will mean the challenge there will be to paint a model so that it replicates perfectly the shiny surfaces, painted surfaces on one of these aircraft, but also the chrome finish of the fuselage. These aircraft are highly polished and I like the idea of 
trying to replicate that highly polished finish. So that means that I don't have to fill the wings so that I don't have to worry about any of that kind of thing. I can just glue this thing together, clean up the joints and then concentrate only on the paintwork. What I'm planning to do with that is use some of these. These are K paints. These come from Italy. They were given to me at last year's national championships to try. This is the these are the primers for that, but they do a range of acrylic metallics that I will be using on this, one of which is a chrome. There's a chrome base paint here, black, that I'm planning to, to use on the fuselage and then use their chrome paint on that. There's no real variation in terms of the panels on those, on those warbirds, so chances are it will be a consistent finish nose to tail. I may change some panels around the nose and, and see how that goes. Maybe even replicate some of the, the control surfaces in slightly different finish. Don't know yet. Not sure how I'm going to go about that. But it's certainly a challenge to be able to work on something and try and get that finish. The wings will be glass, all of the markings will be glass, all of the all of the areas over the 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 markings over the the, the nose, the one I photographed, or I, took, or I replicated, rather I posted onto my Facebook page today was one that I got a blue nose and it was really glossy blue as well and then the fuselage was all chromed and then all of the markings. It's kind of a real challenge. I'm, I'm, I'm at the point at the moment where I'm wondering whether or not this model is going to go one of two ways. It's either going to look really great when it's finished and be a nice contrast to the main one, or it's going to be an absolute disaster and it's just going to look like a toy that, that I can't really do anything with. Still, I'm going to have a go at it, see what it looks like, and, and then maybe show off how these paints work on something like that. Never tried a crane finish on anything before, so that's going to be a real... Um, a really interesting few hours with the airbrush I think. So we'll see how that goes. So those are three upcoming projects that are kind of away from the normal everyday bread and butter of, of the magazine. Hope you like seeing those today and um, that you'll that you'll enjoy seeing the results one, once they happen. I'm not sure really with Harrier when that's going to be done we're only into February at the moment, so chances are it's not going to be done until later in the year. Um, don't know. I'm also planning another 24th scale conversion for the Airfix kit as well, which I'll reveal much later in the year. I'm not planning to, to talk about that too much. But uh, but in the meantime, these are these are three, three new builds. And um, I'd like to thank everybody once again who took the time to, to watch the last video. Um, and also took the time to read some of the nonsense on the blog. It's much appreciated. Glad you're taking a, you know, that you're kind enough to take an interest in the the nonsense that I come out with and 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 and, and write. So thanks very much for that. And I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you again at some point in the very near future. Cheers and take care. Bye now.